I'm back, and today I want to talk about how to make some cinematic style percussion using sound design. So all we're going to use today is just a synth that uses white noise. You can use any synth for this. And we need M Wobbler, although you can use any other type of filter if you have one, and a M Rhythmicizer. But let's get started. So you see here I have M Power Synth. I'm going to turn off all the oscillators except for the noise. I just want the noise here enabled like this. White noise. Let me turn the width down. You don't really have to do that, but I just felt like it. it sounds better to me. And now what I want to do is I want to insert M Wobbler on this track. So I'm going to go to the default here. And we see here we have the LFO. It's going a little bit fast. I don't really want that. Let's sync it to the tempo. Easy enough, right? Now we're going to go through how to use this. Uh, in another video on M Wobbler I did, uh, I guess about six months ago, I went over this, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. If you want more information on how to do this, look there. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to adjust the frequency here just so I can hear something. Uh, frequency range, increase that. Don't want that. Turn the resonance, it doesn't have to be all the way down, but somewhere in there. Turn the resonance up, but now it's using an LFO. I don't want that at all. I want it to use a step sequence. So I have it like this, but this isn't the sound I want. Let's go into this little downward slope, and this will create a kind of drum sound or percussive sound. So let's listen to that. So it sounds kind of like a drum, but it has too much of that. Whoosh, whoosh. I don't like that. So first thing I'm going to do is change this. Uh, filter to a 24 decibel per octave low pass filter and then I'm going to start decreasing the resonance range. That sounds pretty good, a little bit less. Increase the frequency. That's sounding pretty close to what I want. Now let's put some drive on there just to add a little bit of character. So, for the most part, it's sounding decent. It's not perfect, but close to what I want. Uh, from here, I think only problem is, or actually, there's lots of problems, but the first one I want to address is the step sequencer. See this? This is really uh, like lazy. I could do better. So, let's go into here, and let's use some Euclidean rhythms. If you don't know what these are, I'll put a little card up here so you can see what this is. And I explain it better in the other video. But here, you just see, ah, I have some Euclidean rhythms, and this makes it a little bit more interesting, although it's a little bit sparse still, I believe. So let's listen to this. So that's good, but let's add a little bit more to that so it has more of a driving pulse. So what I can do is add just small bits in here. So let me play it, and as I add it, you'll be able to hear what I'm doing. Now adjust this a little bit more. Now, I think that's pretty good, but let's kind of thin that out. I don't want these, like, big drums. I want maybe something smaller. Something sounds like a tick or a, a drum stick hit on, like, a table or something. So let's go to filter 2. Changes from a low-pass filter to a high-pass filter. Turn the resonance down. And then from here, let's start moving this frequency up until we hear the sound we want. drive. Pretty good, but still not exactly what I want. So let's mess with the trim here.
I like that. It, to me, it sounds kind of like a drumstick being hit on a floor or a table or something, which is what I want. Uh, you sometimes hear this in maybe like, was it the Batman, the Dark Knight, or like movie trailers or something, but it can be used for anything. It's kind of in between an organic sound and a synth synthetic sound, and so it has lots of uses. But let's go in, and the next thing I want to add is a reverb. So I just want that so I can get a little bit of space on this. I don't want it to sound so dry and foreign. It sounds bad like that. Adding just a little bit of reverb can help. So let's try about 600 milliseconds. I want don't want too much, so let's hear this. Let me increase a few things because I can't really hear those uh, lower level hits, so I want to increase this a little bit more. That sounds better. Of course, I can use a compressor on this afterwards if I really want to even it out. But so far, I think it's sounding pretty good. And one other thing I added. Um, when I did a song about three weeks ago, I did this technique, and what I did, I thought, this sounds good, but I wanted a little bit more. I wanted kind of like that glitchy sound, so what I did was I used M Rhythmicizer. Uh, should be in here. And then, uh, if you don't know how to use this plugin, I'll, I'll show you quickly, because I didn't understand how to use this when I first uh, demoed it. But if you go here, it says Enable MIDI, and oh, let me close this. You see on the side here, here's my synth, but this will actually work as an in instrument if you enable the MIDI. Good. Now I'll go to General, and now you see here where it says C1. Whenever I hit the C1 note on my keyboard, it'll play this, which is nothing. But if I hit C sharp 1, it'll play this pattern. If I hit D1, it'll play this pattern, etc. So you can play it as an instrument. And another important thing is this note off parameter. If you don't have that, it'll just completely it'll repeat this uh, pattern forever. And if you change note off, as soon as you release the key, it'll go back to C1, which is no pattern. So, um, actually, push note off, like I just said. And I'm going to play this, and then with the M Rhythmicizer, I'll kind of just mess around with this to get some glitchy type effects. So, here we go. Okay, I messed up. Uh, I forgot one last thing. So this control here, I have this MIDI. So I need this hooked up to my keyboard, which it is. That's good. It's going all of them. But what I didn't do is I need to route this MIDI to M Rhythmicizer. So now when I press the button, you see it changes. So let's try one more time. Here we go. So there you go. So we can do those types of things with it. And that's cool sometimes as a variation. And I didn't record it, but you can actually record this. I recommend you record it. And that way when it's playing, it'll play the exact same thing every time. I kind of like to go through like that and you know, kind of push it randomly and see what sounds good. And then once I have that recorded, I'll go back and adjust it later. So as you heard there, like some of this stuff sounded terrible. Um, and I'd probably go back and quantize it so it starts directly on a beat or it ends directly on a beat or even change the pattern itself. I kind of went overboard there. I probably shouldn't have done so many of those. I probably wouldn't for a real piece of music, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. And a few other things I can do if I go back to M Wobbler. Like here I have it, and it's cool, but it's in mono, but there is a way I can get more stereo sound out of this. So if you look here for phase difference, this actually decouples the left and the right filter. So 
if I set this at 180 degrees, they'll be out of phase. So it'll start, let's say, in the middle of this pattern. The right one will, and the left one will start at the beginning. So let's see how this sounds. Okay, and I can set it to 90 degrees here, like this, for a different sound. So, I think that sounds pretty good, but I know you're probably thinking like, okay, what else? I got one more trick for you, the last one. So, this one, if you see the panorama, if... At first, I didn't know what this was. I thought it was just panning. So I was like, eh, it's kind of boring. But what it actually does is it shifts the amount of filter, I think the frequency, applied to each side. So I'll play it and I'll shift it so you can hear what it sounds like. So that's a cool effect you can use. I can use this with a modulator. Like this, I'll set it for like 30 maybe, each side. Now, start this, and you see it's controlled by an LFO. Let's sync that up to tempo. One. I can change this. Let's try this type of sine wave. How fast is that going? Uh, still kind of a bit too fast, but that's okay. Let's see how this sounds. So as you can hear, that really changes the sound and it creates all sorts of like interesting movement in it so it doesn't sound just like a synth playing the same thing over and over again. So I can hear that playing in like a, a chase scene or actually maybe a, a suspense scene or something. But since this syncs up, you can use this for fast music, slow music, or even if you're just like, ah, I kind of want some kind of like percussive element, but how do I do it? Using the step sequencer with Euclidean rhythms and altering this, you can come up with all sorts of variations that maybe you wouldn't think of anyways, at least for me, because I sometimes have a problem thinking like, ah, where am I going to come up with a new rhythm? Or like, I need another layer for this rhythm, but what am I going to use? Using this works really well. It's fairly easy, although my explanation probably took a long time, but doing it yourself will be fast. Trust me. So if you have any questions about this, leave them down below. If you liked it, uh, give me a thumbs up. And until next time, see you.